Alrighty, good evening and welcome to Nikos RPG. I'm Jonathan Alvin, your host and uh, the reporter for the Nikos Nightly News, brought to you by the uh, 3G Network and Gnome News Network, and uh, I should say Gnome Gnews Network. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, all the news that's fit to print, so to speak, about the world of Nikos over the last week or so covering all of the uh, current campaigns. So we have to start off with, <clears throat> pardon me, the uh, creation of a new uh, uh, Nikos RPG session. We have started role play roulette and so we did play this last weekend an episode of Dayspring Solutions and that is a story world that is, uh, I suppose, somewhat similar to Stranger Things in terms of feel because it is the 1970s, 1980s window and it is uh, uh, something on, on the akin of a, a kind of like a Twilight Zone environment. So. That was a lot of fun. We had four players, and uh, it was the first time for three of them to ever play a role-play game, and we still were success successful in getting into the role-play within eight minutes of start time. So that's pretty impressive for a role-playing system. So Now, in particular, we're speaking now of the, nos the news of Nikos. We are speaking in particular of the four primary groups that are operating, so I will be referring to them by name and giving you details about what's going on in each one of them. Two of them are online and two of them are not. The two that are online are the Heralds of the Change, which is our Sunday game, and our Saturday game is uh, uh, Random Rovers. And that name will more than likely change in the future. But uh, that is the way of things with Nikos as the parties change, so change the in, the adventures. And, oh, I said that wrong. I said that wrong altogether. It is not Random Rovers. The Saturday game is uh, Voyages of the Ark and I. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the one that is the... Uh, soonest to return to us which will be the saturday game we will therefore be ending with the episodes from tonight so stick with us through to the end that way you get the news of all of the episodes so uh, in the case of the ark and i episode this is the group of adventurers that have chosen to sail a vessel into the black water and are in in all uh effects are developing the skill for navigating in the areas beyond the coastline and in their adventures they have now departed an island of a ziggurat having engaged with it but not directly involved with it and have made their way into the deeper waters after an interchange with individuals that were involved with off offshore operations. I won't go much into detail, but they have successfully been able to get their vessel uh, removed from it, the place where it grounded on the Ziggurat Isle and have now traveled they have reached a, d a distance of 13 up to 15 hexes south. They had two of their night journeys did not go as well as they would like, and they ended up uh, with easterly headings in both cases. So they're not certain whether they actually successfully navigated south those two hexes. So therefore, they could be anywhere between 13 and 15 hexes south of the village of Selk and more will come from that in the future. I will say that they did enter, have in there, matter of fact, let me go look at it and give you the de specific details. We actually are keeping a log 
of the vessel's movements and in particular where is it arcani all right so uh day day three they have moved, moved away from the ziggurat they have uh engaged with personnel uh, uh that were aboard what appears to be one of the mirror vessels and they have uh, been provided a copy of the purpose a a record that is incredibly important to the enjoined of this iteration and uh if you are interested in being a part of the group we you, we are accepting additional participants through our patreon program so if you uh join us as a patreon sponsor at the uh $20 level you get the opportunity to play in both our Saturday and Sunday games every week for no additional charge so just realize that that's a way to get into a couple of the campaigns and therefore get in kind of an edge on what's going on in the world by being a part of two uh, special events the Saturday game is held at 9 a.m pacific time through noon and the Sunday episode is 1 o'clock p.m. until 4 p.m. Uh, same thing, Pacific time. So if you're interested in those, please join with us on the, in those particulars and we'll hope to, hope to see you there soon. In the meantime, they have gathered their copy of the purpose from their new allies and have sailed southward. On day three, they lost sight of land, so they... From that point on, now are traveling in the black water completely uh, without any framework for maintaining their heading other than the sun and the stars. Day four, uh, the winds were easterly. They had still had no land in sight, but they had no encounters and the weather remained fair. Uh, throughout the night, there were no seeming changes and on day five they still had not uh, found land although the winds did hold but on days on the on the night of uh the, on the sorry night five they passed by a large shape underwater that seemed to be on a, a crossing path and they in, uh, took the precaution of navigating around that engagement and therefore never got to place eyes on whatever the large shape was that passed by them but the next morning they awoke with the winds westerly they again traveled for several days thereafter and then on day 11 after a couple of missed navigations they engaged with what appeared to be um, a bloom of sea creatures around them and in in all in, in in their defense the sea lilies were actually trying to warn them against an impending attack from below below and the adventurers uh in that group uh ensorcelled the plant life and actually turned it against the threat and utilize the chaos that resulted from that counterattack. And although it didn't destroy an entire, uh, uh, I guess you would call it a garden of sea lilies, although it did get them destroyed, they, they uh, escaped and were able to observe for the first time an actual kraken. And they avoided it and now I found themselves two weeks south of Selk. Um, they continued on that path and they've even developed a sort of, sort of sense of humor and are starting to brew beer aboard the vessel. And so we will see how that goes as long as we don't get into, bad, any, into any bad weather that should turn out all right and uh, will take them some time to develop. But on the on the 15th day uh they 
have sighted land, which would put the land somewhere between uh, 15 and 17 hexes south. They therefore have, have determined that their actual sighting position was 13 to 15 hexes south. And so they are excited about actually having achieved something that no one thought possible, and that was finding land uh, beyond the horizon. So that's, that's the joy of the Ark and I voyage. Next is the Heralds of the Change campaign. And as it opened, let's see, where are they? Ah, so they determined that they would leave out of the Eldrin Forest and make their way to an engagement that they basically committed to in meeting with the representative of the Imperator of the Middle Kingdoms. And that meeting is supposed to uh, take, a, take place in Florin, and so they determined they would cross through the lands to the north and east of Potiphar, and as they made for the Gap of Zenith, they discovered a, pretty much to their surprise, a dwarven keep nestled in that pass, the entry to which appeared to be broken into. Now, they had also experienced several uh, debris fields that were suggestive of uh, dragon kind or other large uh, airborne predators wherein the uh, food source animal, the sheep or elk or whatever, what may be, uh, was perceived to have been burned and then dashed upon the ground before being consumed. And so they haven't have ascertained that more than likely one or more small dragons are in the area. So as they passed by the hold, which they had not yet uh, determined to be, but now are aware that they must be the hold of Zenith Splinter Shield. The um, they they've determined that the problem that the dragon the dragons are probably nesting in there, and so they gave it a wide berth. Now, uh, shortly thereafter, they came upon a property that uh, overlooked the ascent to the summit of the P of the pass, and was well positioned for spotting out and observing the dwarven keep and also found surprisingly that it apparently is being operated by a, a magus of, of no small power by the name of crazy jared uh, of course the crazy part seems to be somewhat of an act as he is very clearly somewhat of a charlatan and performer and he's working with the um, with his facility, the Outpost Emporium, to muster funds to support his maintenance of this well-placed location. And so they engaged with, with Crazy Jared for some time, enjoying his display, learning considerable more about the, the location of the dwarves and all of that before they departed and continued on their way. Eventually found themselves on the shores of the uh, rather unkempt lake uh, beyond and, and from which they would have to cross to get to Florin proper. And as they crossed through that water on a rented punt, they find themselves in a area where a excavation of sorts is being uh, planned and executed. And the 
traders that are operating that are, are operating under the name of A and M Excavations of Flor of Florin. The banners are suggestive of the nation of Florin, but the actual employees, if you will, those that are wearing the tabards, are actually independent employees of this A and M organization. And so on the western shore of the Crystal Lake, adjacent to that staging area, the adventurers have found themselves camping, and that's where that adventure is. They are roughly one to two days out of Florin and about to meet with the Imperator's representatives. Before we go on, I want to thank you if you're watching the show. We greatly appreciate you being with us. If you haven't yet, make sure you give this channel a follow so you'll be given updates on whenever we have a new episode come online. And if you haven't, also check out our YouTube page uh, at Nikos RPG, where there are, I believe, something like 700 videos to peruse, including the live stream shows that we did a couple of years ago and a lot of modern content that that is supportive of game masters and provides resources and tools for making your games better. If you would like to be a part of what we're doing, definitely check out our Patreon account at patreon.com slash Nikos. And also for more information on the lore, visit www.nikosrpg.info. All right. Back to the news. We are now going to be discussing the group known as the Strangers in a Strange Land, the Monday campaign. So let me get back over to their notes. All right. So we are in the city of El Sadar and dealing with the now forming uh, empire, if you will, of the Middle Kingdoms. The three legislative, or I should say executive branches of the various governments have thrown their support behind the Imperator Darkin Val and his minions who are, although they have membership that hail from areas as far to the west as Karim are actually working with the local leaders and governances to build up a formalized martial force. Uh, there's, they're claiming to be wishing to support the peaceful mission of the priest kings and their advancing support teams heading uh, south out of the area of the Middle Kingdoms, both into Grawlum and into Yarlum, the two continents. And they did, uh, the, the, the party of adventurers um, headed in, uh, in effect by the titular regent of Jadarun have begun negotiating for Em, uh, em, embassies within the Middle Kingdoms and at this early juncture because the players had done so well in protecting the life of the king of Florin uh, a man who they, they know as the Lord Marshal they have negotiated for the first actual ground based embassy for Shadowrun to be constructed in one of the Florin cities, more than likely the capital, and to start to work on negotiating for the other places that they wish them. Now, it, it was noted that they have discovered that the Imperator's troops were complicitous with the uh, first course uh, of the meal served at the banquet wherein the assassination attempt occurred and so it does appear that they are not only involved with that but they may actually be actively pursuing the concept of finding the seeker whomever that might be and so 
the adventurers were quick to expand their searches and discovered that this arrangement with the Imperator seems to be more about supporting an already developing advancement and that there is an active force attempting to manipulate and control the Middle Kingdoms. So we will find more information about that in the future weeks, but they are remaining in El Sadar and pursuing this angle until such time that the, embass uh, the embassies are committed to by the uh, members of this Middle Kingdom's regime. But it was important to note that the Imperator Darkenval himself seems to be the one who's driving uh, the request for information on the Seeker. So, interesting, interesting sideline there. Now, as we talk about the Skiffborn, the the irony is that they're currently not Skiffborn. Uh, their vessel is currently uh, stationed in the city-state of Nexus, and the crewman that is intending to come and pick them up from their, I guess you would call it their would-be island prison, uh, was not able to make it, so they had to spend uh, yet another full day on the island of the Tangerine Ziggurat. And they have discovered quite a bit, and they weighed out the risks and determined it was important enough for them to individually and collectively have conversations with the imprisoned one, in this case uh, being whose name in the vernacular is known as the Eater of Tongues, and his individual name is Baphomet. In that process, they were able to ascertain that Baphomet is not the tongue eater of old. As a matter of fact, it seems that he appropriated that name, ironically, as a way to avoid being captured when he was trying to separate himself from the uh, Grohl who were becoming Puritans uh, and, and hunting down the aberrant within their own numbers. And in order to avoid that, he took on the name of Tongue Eater, which ironically ended up getting him captured and placed in the ziggurat during the end of the eighth iteration. Now that's all now ancient past, but in this discussion, they soon discovered that not only is there a problem with their imprisonment, but there actually may be uh, dynamic issues involved in the ziggurats themselves. So there's going to be so much more going forward. They also determined that when uh, a complete group of the enjoined are within the ziggurat, the identifying emblems that allow you to identify the zig are occluded or prevented. And so they determined that, that once they were inside, then the ziggurat is no longer broadcasting its location to the world. So that's also a, an interesting piece. There's so much more that happens in these games than I can describe in, in even a, a, a half an hour, let alone an hour of these broadcasts. So. If there's more information you would like to know, feel free to join these groups. The group on uh, Monday and Tuesday are board game, are Strangers in Strange Land and the Skipborn. Those are both of, uh, at Board Game Paradise, our support store at uh, 100, I believe, State Street in Redlands, California. We start at 6 p.m. and we run until 10 p.m. And We'd love to have you with us. If you're unable to join us there, do remember you can support us through the Patreon account and therefore join the Monday, the Sunday and Saturday game sessions that we talked about earlier. Well, I have pretty much reached the end of the news that I wanted to say. If you're watching and you have a question, feel free to ask it uh, while I'm on the air and I will 
do what I can. Oof, I didn't realize that music was still on, so I'm probably been blasting you out the whole time. Yikes, I'm gonna apologize for that. And in the meantime, we are pretty much at the end of the half hour, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll uh, respond to them either here or in the next broadcast. Do remember that we broadcast every day of the week, 10 a.m. in the morning and 11 p.m. at night. Uh, all things Nikos will have some really cool stuff for you in the next couple of days. I hope to talk to you again soon. This is Jonathan, Nikos RPG. Have a great night.